What's going on, everybody? So today we have a full 2023 updated Eternal Evolution Beginner's Guide. Wow, that was a mouthful. Uh, but for any of you new players out there or for someone who might want to restart, I'm going to give you guys the first four weeks of summoning advice, strategies, characters to upgrade, and potential things to look out for while you're progressing early on into the game. Let's get into it. All right, so we're going to talk about the first four weeks. Now, if you are a spender, this changes drastically. You can kind of do whatever the heck you want. My suggestions are for low spender to free to play because you're not going to have as many summons and as many resources. First off, we have to talk about the first four weeks because we don't know what characters we're getting. We don't know what free resources we're getting. We don't know when we're spending our summons. And so to talk about all those strategies later on in the video, we needed to figure out what we're doing for our first four weeks and our schedule. First week, we have two banners, two events. Military expansion is the first event. This is a pay to win event. The only way to get military rank and battle merit points to progress the event is through the battle order. Um, and you can get some daily quests that'll give you up to, um, you have eight times five, which is about 40 points per day. Uh, and that's the only way to get battle merit. So that's the only thing you can do to progress that event. Ignore it if you're a spender. Battle merit or uh, military expansion spending during this event isn't a bad thing. So spend during that event, but then save your resources for uh, potentially another event. This is the way you're going to progress your military rank. Then we have the Grand Ceremony. The Grand Ceremony is an event which basically you have to get 80k points and you get a free Ravenna copy at the end. You also get a bunch of other copies of random characters. I can't remember what. I think Omar is in there and I think some other resources are in there. But you basically just need to summon and progress the game to progress that event. I would recommend you don't summon your limited summons because the banners in the first week are going to be Luke and Ravenna, which are above my head and to the right there. Those two are solid, amazing energy AoE damage dealers, but they're not going to give you as much value for a new account as the week two and the week three and even the week four events. So I would skip it for the first week to give you guys enough summons to summon for those other events. Okay, so definitely skip that one. Um, as you're progressing, you're going to want to summon your advanced and basic summons guaranteed. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time finding any sort of elite to upgrade. And this will help you push that military expansion or not military expansion, the grand ceremony. If you finish off the grand ceremony, there is some merit to waiting to week two because there's going to be a recruitment event. Now, really quickly, I just want to gloss over the wishlist characters. If you are starting out, there's three characters that I think are non-negotiable in this wishlist. Serena, Taylor, Bot Mark II. These three above my head, um, these ones that I'm pointing to right over my finger, those three you bas basically have to have, in my opinion. After that, the other two, Omar and Her Hercules, can be basically whoever you choose. My recommendation, strong recommendation, by the way, is Kalaza and or Senway and Hercules. Kalaza and Senway are my preferred. You definitely want some summoners in your team, and getting those on the wish list sooner rather than later is going to help you progress things like Ancient Altar, which is going to help you uh, very, very quickly. That's going to be week one, guys. Week two, we have Emma Banner. We have Elite Chapter, Cure Evolution, and the Recruitment Event. So for this Elite Chapter, you're basically going to go through, just complete it as you normally would. You should be able to beat the whole event as long as you've been playing consistently. Um, and you're going to be able to get a free Emma copy. You're going to purchase that Emma copy with the shop in that event and then skip any other purchasing with your meteorites. Okay, your meteorites should be saved for the following event. Anything else you can buy. The blue dust, you should buy anything that you can in that event. Hero Evolution event. This is a very critical event. The Hero Evolution event and the Recruitment event. The Recruitment event will be active. So you want to summon your advanced summons, your limited summons, and all that good stuff right now. Now, how many advanced or limited summons? We'll go over that in just a second. But your Hero Evolution event basically means as you evolve Emma, you're going to get free Emma copies, um, which is really, really important. Now, in order to get that Emma copy, you're going to get... You're going to need to get Emma copies uh, from Gene Hybrids or just from getting her from Elite Chapter or for getting her from Pity, etc, etc. You need four Emma copies in order to get that fifth free Emma copy. So you need to get four somewhere in the game. Now, this uh, Hero Evolution event rolls over into week three. So that is part of our strategy for the Emma banner. What I'd recommend is spending 80 limited tickets into this banner. 60 to guarantee yourself an Emma copy, and then another 20 to get a Gene Hybrid. This is important because if you are unlucky going for Emma and you don't get an extra copy from those 80 summons or from the 60 summons, you need another copy to push that Hero Evolution over the edge, okay, to get that free copy. So 80 summons to get your Gene Hybrid, 
if you get lucky and you get an Emma copy before the pity, so you get two total from your 60 summons, you could skip out on going for this gene hybrid and going for 80 summons. You just can go for the 60. I definitely recommend you go for 60 because you do want to hit that pity. It's very, very efficient. And then you're going to, you know, evolve your Emma. <clears throat> okay. Then we enter week three because the hero evolution scales into week three. So early week three, this is where it gets really, really crazy. We're gonna have the Crete banner, okay? Not only the Crete banner, we're gonna get a double chip event. What that means is that every limited summon that you summon, you're gonna get a double chip, which means that this chip down here, this resource shop, you're gonna get two chips for every one summon. This basically allows you to get more gene hybrids. And if you're free to play, you basically get enough limited summons to buy the gene hybrid every time if you're very efficient. Um, or you can buy extra copies, which are a little bit more expensive. The gene hybrids act as a free copy of any evolution of a specific character, which is why the gene hybrids are so, so important. We also have the Galactic Arena event and the Military Expansion event. Again, the Military Expansion event is the pay-to-win event. The Galactic Arena, this is um, basically something like uh, the Galactic Bounty, except you don't collect quests. All you're going to do is participate in five galactic arena battles every single day. And then you're gonna RNG, it's a slot machine. So do your tag team arena, your galactic arena battles five times per day, and you're gonna get a free Crete guaranteed. Even if um, you don't necessarily do every single day, you should get it, um, there's some leeway there. Double chip event, you should summon every single summon that you possibly have for Crete. A, you're gonna wanna get Crete. He's an absolute beast of a progression character, especially for the campaign, but you're gonna have a double chip event. The double chip is where it gets really, 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 really important. Along with Crete, there's gonna be a Skewer and Hattie banner. Now, assuming you only used about 80 summons on Emma, you should have enough summons to go for pity on Skewer and Hattie and Crete. My recommendation is go 60 Skewer, 60 Crete. Now, I know that this isn't gonna give you as many Crete copies, potentially, who knows if you're unlucky at least you guarantee because there's no guarantee you're going to get a triple s after that pity but the value of getting 60 summons and guaranteed triple s is way way more important in my opinion and skewer hattie is a crazy good character and you're definitely going to use him later on so i definitely recommend you go 60 skewer 60 creep assuming that skewer is going to be in that in that group which it was for us so that's going to give you the double chips. And I recommend you do this, guys, day one of the limited banner. Normally, I suggest you wait a little bit later on into the banner just in case there's any events going on. However, this is where it gets really, really important to go summon by the double gene hybrid. You're going to want to buy both double gene hybrids. There's going to be one for the skewer banner, one for the creep banner. And then guess what? You're going to use both of those into Emma to get your free Emma copy. And you're going to have a ton of double chips left over for the future banners for the future gene hybrids. Definitely any limited summons that you have left over, I would dump into Crete, 60 Crete, 60 Skewer, and then any extra into Crete. Then we go on to week four. This is the last portion of the first four weeks, um, obviously, because it's week four. We have a Mazrani banner. We have a recruitment event and an Astral Order. So the Astral Order event is uh, just going to be basically the Galactic Bounty. You're going to go through here and you're going to do quests. At least that's what it was for us. And you're going to get a free Mizrani uh, copy as well as some limited tickets, some advanced summons and things like that. Um, and you're going to have the recruitment event and the Mizrani banner. The Mizrani banner, I personally recommend you guys go for 60 copy or 60 summons in the Mizrani banner because you get a guaranteed Mizrani copy. After that, don't spend any. And I also recommend that you do not spend your advanced summons if you are decently progressed. If you have an immortal Serena or if you have a high level Serena, a high level Taylor, save your advanced summons. If you do not summon after week four, you're going to want to save all of your advanced summons for future recruitment events for a potential Bailey copy or for free Serena copies, okay? Because at 150 summons, you get a free Serena copy from the recruitment event, which is this right here. Basically, when you do summons, you get free resources, and you're going to want to get those Serena copies every single time if you're free to play until you get an Immortal Serena. Once you get an Immortal Serena, then you're going to save all of your advanced summons for Bailey, which is at 700 summons total between limited and advanced recruitment. But for the limited summons, you're going to summon 60 on Masrani and then save, save, save until another double chip event happens or another important banner um, that I think is worthwhile. Which, if you guys want to see any more information about summoning, then you guys can check out another video that I have on the channel talking about everything you need to know about for summoning. But that wraps up the first four weeks. 
one other thing about the first four weeks there's going to be twilight event uh, lands events like the one that's going on right now these are kind of random um from what i've seen they kind of appear during certain special events for example this was kind of a winter twilight lands we had a halloween or thanksgiving twilight lands uh, they usually are every like month or so so keep an eye out for these and these are going to give you a bunch of summons resources things like that you're definitely going to want to progress this every single time that you see them available that's going to be your first four week planner now that we know what we're doing for our first four weeks let's go over the characters that we're going to invest in and the general strategy that we're going to go for so we have our characters, we should have Emma, we should have Crete, things like this. As you're progressing through, the characters you're going to want to focus on for campaign, as well as going for your Disa Caves and things like that, you're going to want to focus on a few characters. Emma, right here, Emma is a must-have. You're going to get her from that limited summons. Taylor, which is why I have him in the advanced summons, okay? Serena, who's like the best healer in the entire game. Okay, this, these three are going to be incredibly, incredibly important. Okay, after that three, it really depends on who you're summoning and who you're getting from your advanced summons. Okay, I recommend Bot Mark 2. This is going to set you up really nicely for Disa Caves. And I also recommend uh, Liren. Reason for this is double healer is incredibly important for a lot of team comps, especially if progressing your elite campaign, your storyline. And so I actually think Liren is a really, really good one if you get a lot of copies of her. Otherwise, Artist is a good one because you get a lot of free copies of Artist. Or if you happen to have any sort of Rise of Heroes events to give you a bunch of free copies of another character, that could also change the strategy. But in my opinion, Emma, Taylor, Serena here, um, and Botmark 2 are going to be the four that you're going to prioritize. This is going to help you in so many different areas of the game. For campaign, uh, you're going to run through and push as far as you possibly can. My recommendation for hero lineup is going to be, um, oh, let me just move myself over here. Serena in the front, Liren, Emma, Taylor, Botmark 2, or Emma, Taylor, Botmark 2, plus one, whoever you're going to use in there. Definitely going to want to progress the campaign as much as you possibly can. Your elite campaign, again, these are just daily resources. You're gonna to wanna to progress as far as you possibly can every single day. And this is where it gets a little tricky because a lot of these have quests, like for example, use two assassin classes. Don't worry about that, just progress as far as you can and then start collecting, start collecting tailor copies and whatever summon character uh, that you are working on, okay? The reason for that is these take about a month to acquire one character. So if you guys aren't collecting these every single day, you're going to have a hard time um, doing it in a reasonable time. Okay. So that's going to be a lead campaign storyline. Then we move on to the perimeter. Now, as I mentioned, we already went over the characters that we're going to want to invest in for the gear, gear wise and for levels and all that good stuff. At the same time, exclusivizing these characters or you upgrading their exclusive you're going to want to get these guys as far up exclusive as you possibly can focus on getting them all to 10 first and then focus on getting emma to 20 and then taylor to 20 and then emma to 30 etc etc and you're going to use all these characters in all manner of game modes the wasteland is something you're going to want to do every single day the rift fisher is going to be something that you're going to want to do one time completion as you unlock them you'll see them they'll have little unlocks like beat story like 12 uh, to unlock this you're going to want to do them as you unlock them arena you're just going to do it every single day same with galactic arena nothing too particular there you're not going to be focusing on any of these you're going to just do them as you complete them same with the soul mine and the factions just do them as you go try them every couple of days but then we have the three dungeons disa caves terra dome and sinsara marsh um so we have Adisa Caves, Terradome, Tinsara Marsh, and Ancient Altar. These four game modes are the ones that you're going to want to focus on, kind of. Terradome and Tinsara Marsh are kind of going to be completed as you just get resources. Adisa Caves is the one you're focusing, and Ancient Altar is the one you're focusing, okay? So, um, Adisa Caves, you're going to want to go ahead and prioritize this dungeon above all else. Why? Because we have white pieces of gear. In this dungeon, these... Um, Gear, we're going to get gear in general, but white pieces of gear are going to be the best pieces of gear in the entire game and going to really amp up your account. So what you're going to do is you're going to just play free to play. Don't use any of your extra stamina until you reach level 10. Once you reach level 10, you have a chance of getting white gear. You're going to dump all of your stamina in that dungeon and then save. Save until level 10, dump your stamina, save. After you've dumped your stamina, you should be able to progress a couple stages. And then over the next couple days, you probably get to level 13 or 14. You can dump your stamina again and then save for level 15 because you should be able to reach level 15 in a reasonable amount of time. 
Terra Dome, you're going to want to progress this as you go as much as you possibly can. Use Taylor in here. You can use them um, to jump into the circle. Other than that, you're going to need to use melee characters, which just takes you a little bit of time. Tinsaro Marsh, although this is an AoE area where you need AoE characters to deal with the spiders, you can actually burst it with Emma and Taylor, which is actually what I do. You can see behind me, I'm using Taylor and Emma. So don't be alarmed where it's like, oh, you need AoE characters. You can actually push this way harder with single target DPS more so than you think. So don't worry about building for this dungeon. Then we have Ancient Altar, and this is where most of your summons are going to come from, most of your summon income. You're going to get a ton from this game mode. Now, there isn't much you could do about it besides summoning the correct characters and getting the upgrades for them, but the general strategy here for this one, I'm not going to go super in-depth because this could take an hour just to go through this one, but to give you guys a general beginner's guide to this one, Team 3, you're going to want to put your best characters, your best single target characters, and your best healers in this one. After that, team two, you're going to want to put your best summoners, probably amping, uh, like kind of supporting it with another healer, and then push this one as hard as you possibly can after team three. Team one, you can just ignore, okay? Team two and team three are going to be your focus. Team two summoners, team three best single turret damage dealers. You're going to want to push as far as you possibly can at the end of each week. Do not do this at the beginning of the week because the rewards come in at the end of the week anyways. And so put, wait till the end of the week till you're at your strongest. And in the first four weeks, you definitely want to wait for the last day because a week goes so, so fast and so much progression in a week when you're in the first four weeks of the game. So that's going to be your general strategy. I'm just going to go over some miscellaneous stuff here at the end of the video. So a couple of miscellaneous things to go over here before we wrap up the video, guys. These are going to be daily activities, things that you might want to keep an eye out for or potentially any advice for new events that might be coming out. First off, you're going to want to use this fast patrol. Actually, in general, just use gems, fast patrol. Every single day at the end of the day, you're going to want to use that. For your shop here, you're going to want to refresh this four times a day and pick up the soul rubelite and any runes. And what I mean by runes is the exclusive materials, okay? That is going to be incredibly important. And anytime you're in the wasteland and anything might pop up for rubelite or for runes, you're going to want to pick those up. No questions asked. The outpost. These are going to be quick dispatch. You can just do this every single day. You can actually refresh it by using the refresh button and pick the soul rubelite and the diamonds and then refresh it because those are going to be the top priorities. The gold and things are not going to be as high priority. Divine prototypes. You're going to want to use the highest level one you have possible for the most part. There are some that are going to be a little bit better in terms of synergy, but when you're early on, oftentimes you don't have that great of synergy. A few to look out for. Praying Eyes, this is going to give you a lot of extra damage attack. Whenever an ally that is of this class crits with a basic, this works really well with someone like, for example, Taylor or Bot Mark II. Um, for Tenacity, one to look out for. Uh, really, all of these are just kind of okay. Enlightenment, I actually really like this elite one, increasing healing effects. If you happen to get lucky, um, Flash Point's another good one. For the command post, you're going to want to get a good Brynhild commander. You're going to want to look for something that's going to give you either extra crit damage, extra crit rate, or my personal favorite, extra attack. It's going to boost Emma and Taylor and get someone that's going to increase your skill level of Taylor or Emma. Do not underestimate the value of getting a good commander, okay? You definitely want to upgrade these as you get them. Uh, but of course, focus on a mythic commander overall. If you do not have a mythic commander, just use the highest level Brynhild that you have generally for Taylor and Emma. Um, join a guild. This is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly important. Um, I have a few spots in my guild. If you guys want to join, there's the ID, there's the name. Um, but you really, really want to push the daily challenges, the guild hunt, and upgrade your class technology as soon as you possibly can. There's a full guide on that one as well. I'm not going to go into this video, but that's just a side tip. Uh, anything else that I really need to go over? Pretty much any new event that might be coming out, I'll have daily videos out on this channel every single day. So if you guys want to sub to the channel, because any new event that might come out, like a Rise of Heroes, which come out periodically, or a Twilight Land, or potentially a new character like Daniel that recently came out, or Leo, you may want to summon for those characters, even though you're in your first couple of weeks, because they could change the way things go, okay? They could change the way you progress your account just on that release of the character alone, and you might want to get an update on that when it comes out. Other than that, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, one other thing, actually, I forgot to mention, you're going to want to buy stamina. I recommend buying four stamina every single day from other dungeons. That will progress you in Disa Caves uh, quicker. So 
that's gonna be it. <laughs> I, I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. I don't think I did. Hopefully that gives you guys an initial four week beginner's guide. After you pass those first four weeks, I consider you guys in the mid game. So that's gonna be it for the beginner's portion of this guide. If you guys wanna check out any future strategies or anything that I might be doing on my account, check out my videos on the channel. I have been free to play for the majority of my gameplay up until about a week and a half ago, I am no longer free to play, um, which if you guys check out my recent content, you would know why. But if you guys want a good way to progress or basically like a guideline, you could follow my guideline because I was free to play for the majority of this account. So it should give you guys a realistic expectation of what to meet. Um, if you've been playing every single day, being kind of efficient and doing everything that you need to do to progress. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, like the video, sub to the channel. See you all tomorrow.